Hello friends, how is everybody doing today? I hope you're all doing very well. And um, for us, it's the first day of summer. I hope it is for you too. We're just chilling, hanging out, and it's Friday, woo woo! Anyway, hope you're doing great. Um, this is our last day, our final day. We've got, we had our 10 day mindset reset. And um, so number one was look at our thoughts. Number two was turn off the negative news. Number three was identify the toxic thoughts. Step number four was have fun. And step number five, oh, step number five, it was something fun. Oh yeah, believe in yourself. <laughs> believe the truth about yourself. Um, number six was to stop replaying um, the bad things, the, the bad experiences. Number seven was to, what was number seven? Be present, I believe. Number eight. Eight, no, that's number eight. Okay, I'm missing one. Oh yeah, number seven was to remember that your attitude affects people up to three degrees from you every day. That's about a thousand people a day for most people. Number eight was to live in the present. Number nine, which was yesterday, um, was to go out and encourage one person. I wanna hear if you guys encourage someone. I wanna hear how it went. Could you please leave me a comment? I know that if you did, somebody was probably really encouraged by that. Um, number 10, the last day, we're gonna talk about something called the Tetris Effect and how um, just three quick bullet points at the end of your night can make you have a happier life. Um, the Tetris effect is, I don't know if you guys have had this experience, I've had it twice, and that's why I don't play Tetris anymore, but universities have done studies where <clears throat> when students will play Tetris, that game where you know where the shapes fall and you have to rotate them to fit in, um, they do studies where they have the students play that for hours at a time. Hey, you can get paid to do play video games. Hey, don't tell your you know don't tell your kids it doesn't happen. It does. But what they found is that after hours of playing these games, um, the people could not stop seeing the shapes falling from the sky, and even in their brains they were falling from the sky. And then they started seeing in real life opportunities where this would fit into that. They saw the opportunities and the patterning that they were learning from this game in real life. And I've had that happen to me where I could not stop seeing the shapes and stop thinking about them, which is why I don't play Tetris anymore. Um, but what is happening in that, that's called the Tetris effect. And what is happening is you're wiring your brain to search for certain patterns, okay, and opportunities. Now, that can be done in a positive or a negative way. Um, for example, one of, uh, I said on my intro about Brett Culp. If you guys don't follow him, Brett Culp Films, C-U-L-P. He is a friend out of Florida. He makes amazing films, but he has done multiple films about everyday people who are superheroes and what they do. And uh, he is just puts up the best stories on his Facebook. And I was thinking, Brett, if you're watching this, I was thinking about this at 3.30 this morning and I had this revelation. Um, he had put up a story about how his son Logan had is going to another school and his text or his yearbook had gone missing with all the signatures in it and Brett wrote how somebody came up and gave him the textbook and it was the story where this person really was the central hero that they were brave enough to to find this book for Logan and give it to him and um, his stories are like that you know like in the airport he's having a bad day and he highlights the person that um, you know says something kind to him or made a difference in his day and you know what I realized this morning I was 3.30 in the morning again, I was sitting there, and I was thinking about, I was like, man, why does he have such good stories? And then I realized Brett has, is using the Tetris effect to what's happening is that he has patterned his brain to look for everyday superheroes. And those are the stories that he's telling us is those everyday superheroes because he's looked for this, he's wired his brain to look for those opportunities. He's looking for the people who are making a difference all the time. And so he has these wonderful stories that come out of it. That's a positive. You can also have a negative um, side to that, and I won't go into that because you can imagine if you're looking for the negative, um, you're gonna you're gonna see it. Um, but what I do wanna talk today is about patterning your brain to look for gratitude. And I just wanna read this little, this is from The Happiness Advantage by Sean Acor. It's a great book. And this was, he's talking about this and he says, consistently grateful people are more energetic, emotionally intelligent, forgiving, and less likely to be depressed, anxious, or lonely. And it's not that people are only grateful because they're happier either. Gratitude has proven to be a significant cause of po positive outcomes. And basically, um, the researchers are saying when you are being grateful for things, you're looking for that expected outcome. And so, 
One of the ways that you can have a better life is for really being grateful for what you have right now. And um, this is what I do, and I, this is what I said, and three bullet points at night can change your life. And this is what's really changed my life is keeping a gratitude journal. Um, so three points at night, I just sit down and I write, uh, this has some pictures and stuff in it if you can't see it, but um, I write down three things that I'm grateful for every day. And it really primes your brain because there's days when I've, the only thing I've wrote down is that I'm grateful for a flushing toilet, like the day's been that bad. Hey, Amelia. Um, you know, but really it does make you so, <laughs> ah, I was a fly. <laughs> opportunities so like one of the things I'm always grateful for is being able to pay for my groceries that's an amazing thing um, but wanted to share with you one of the best ways it helped me was um, about a year ago um, I was just over a year ago a few days ago um, I was witness to a really tragic accident and a young lady lost her life in a very traumatic way and I was really traumatized by it as probably was everyone else that was there. Um, and one of the ways that this helped me is by helping me focus on um, the things that I was grateful for. So when I came home, you know, for a couple days, I couldn't write anything. I was just so traumatized and in shock. But one day, the next day I wrote, today I'm grateful for going on a run and the little blue flowers that I saw on my run. And that was it, okay? And the next day I wrote, today I'm grateful for Livy's long beautiful eyelashes and Miranda's curiosity and that was it and it kind of drew me back into that sense of that life is actually good because I kind of it kind of flipped the switch that life was really bad and gradually just writing down what I was grateful for <laughs> sent me back into that um, pattern of looking for the good so I just wanted to challenge you today you know start and end your day with gratitude that is the best way to make a happier and better life for yourself and I hope you guys have an awesome day. I hope you've enjoyed this. If if there's anything that you've learned from it that was new to you, I would love to really hear um, about it in the comments. And I uh, hope you guys have an awesome day. And I can't wait to watch that fly fly in my mouth. That's awesome. <laughs> All right. Bye. Mwah.